In this video, I want to show you how to create a dynamic sitemap using Next.js. I'm going to create a new file and I have this in a source directory, but you may just have the pages directory at the project root. I'm going to say sitemap.xml. Since I'm using TypeScript, I'm going to say .tsx. It's important to include this .xml because this is going to signal that this is a XML file. We're going to need to export the default function that the framework expects and just return null here. Where we're going to actually generate the sitemap is on the server. So we're going to use get server side props. We'll just send it some dummy props. Now we're all set up to actually write the sitemap. First thing is to set the header content type text XML. We need to write the sitemap. This is where we're going to put in the XML content that we're going to send over the wire. Once we're all done, we can say in, and this just signals that we can return. Now we need to generate the XML content that we're going to send over the wire. So I'm going to say const XML. I'm going to have a function that's called generate sitemap and then pass in that XML here. So this function doesn't exist. So let's create it here. This is going to return a promise that contains a string. Coming over to Google's documentation, they have a example of a basic XML sitemap. We're going to copy this and use this as a starting point for our own sitemap. I'm gonna create some template strings and copy that in right there. We do not want to send example.com over our sitemap, so we need to get our own page metadata to render here. So this is going to depend on how your project is set up. In my own project, I have a function that returns some pages. This function is called get blog posts. I'm just gonna get the most recent. We can come in here to this XML and we'll just loop over these pages. We can take this URL here and just copy it in. And of course, instead of this example.com URL, we will use the page URL. And instead of this random date here, we will use the page updated at. I store the updated at string as a ISO date string. I'm going to use the date FNS library to convert the ISO string into this format. So I'm going to say format and I'm going to say new date. And then I can pass in the ISO string into the constructor and then I'll pass it the format. Once we got that, we can take out this. We need to make sure that we join this array here with an empty string. I will start up a dev server, go to slash sitemap.xml. Here is our sitemap. We can see all of the blog posts are showing up here. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.